when you look at um, the growth of Curtin Hospitality and the way that we enter the GCC, I think one of the things that's really important to note before talking about any projects is the GCC, different than many other places in the world, 68% um, of the population is under 35, which means that there is spending power at a younger audience. People have traveled very well but are expecting something different from products. And so when we looked at initially putting our projects, it was really about locations and destinations that were up and coming, that had potential for growth, that were well-traveled and were looking for experiences. So for example, when you look at our project in Ras al in the UAE, um, the, the government and, and the authorities of Ras al have put in so much effort to um, create Ras al as a destination when it comes to putting in uh, flights, um, now with the whole story around Wynn, um, when it comes to March on Island, when it comes to um, you know, Jebel Jays is the mountain and, and, you know, if that zip line or the highest restaurant or, but really kind of creating, even through conferences, essentially very important conferences in the world in Ras Al what has been important is that the products that come with it are different. So we're going to do a, an eco resort in Ras Al at the foot of the mountain and what what that gives us really is it gets us to connect to the local culture, to the local people, to attract um, a, a local audience. Um, but also there are so many expats that would like to have their weekend away or their week away or can now travel from home and therefore you know, pick up and live from there. Um, when we look at Saudi Arabia, we launched the house hotel in, in Jeddah uh, now a year ago, actually, we're, we're at the anniversary time. Um, and since then, we've won a number of awards, if Meet Award, a Conan Ast Award, um, His Excellency, um, the Minister of Tourism, Al Khatib, stayed with us and, and really, uh, you know, supported with, with his tweets and, and, and his communications around it. Um, we have in our space a, a serviced office space open already three years in, in Jeddah. We signed the APA, which is something between 55 and 70 eco villas, and the number fluctuating a bit because it's agricultural land. We are integrating the agricultural um, business into our restaurant. We are working with the farmers locally to ensure everything is injected. Um, and then we have Lula coming up in November, which we can't talk about so much yet, but it's a, it's again a very different product that you would expect from us. So it's not a classic hotel, it's not a you know kind of a classic cookie cutter experience. But with all of these projects, what you see is that there is knowledge share going on between the local community and the international community and through sustainability, social sustainability um, and looking at the destination, we really integrate that a lot. And then, I mean, we have Egypt starting to open for us uh, summer next year. And this is eight hotels plus service departments, so two and a half thousand keys in total. Um, a project that has a scale of building a, another city, which they've been doing for the last couple of years. Um, and we're really excited that that product is coming onto the market now with everybody looking with even the Egyptian market picking up with all of its difficulties and, and, and currency fluctuations, etc. Um, those products, one is just a, a city out of the city and the other one is the North Coast um, summer destination for, for many. But again, it allows us to create a different product. And when I say different product, it really doesn't mean just in look and feel. What is really particular about our projects is that they're mixed use. So they're combining long and short stay, working components, so you can attract a leisure audience and a working audience. And this really allows us um, to be more interesting for people to stay for a longer period to come and work, to come and stay, but not something that is so seasonal, which always impacts the owner and which always impacts, you know, the profit or return of investment per square meter. Before COVID, people were, were, were talking about uh, digital nomads to be millennials, just the young generation, the kind of hip and cool. Um, during COVID, it was the whole world that became a digital nomad. Today, 
Portugal and Spain have just put in the digital nomad visa tax-free a year you can work there and that's just the beginning of it looking at the GCC and looking at the innovations and developments that the GCC have been following the chance that there will be a visa or kind of a, a product for that will be quite quick the amount of people in the GCC that have been working from home for a long time is quite significant so I'd say it's just at the beginning stage and the the, the product available for a digital nomads is really limited so I think it's there to stay I think it's something that will develop much further and that's also why you can see service departments and branded residences coming into play more it's just that it's not just about the brand it's really about the, the full experience that you create in the communities that you create and creating a community is difficult to do from a piece of paper you have to really structure um, the creative part, but also the community building part um, to, to bring something to life. At the good old times, we talked about CSR, corporate social responsibilities, and it was always about kind of creating a, a moment or creating an activity once a year or, you know, doing something social, but not something that was durable with roots, etc. We then got the word ESG, which is environment, social and governance. And many people, um, when they talk about ESG, don't really know what it means, don't really know that the, the environment is sustainability, that the social is the people and governance is actually how you measure anything about it. So what we did as Kirtan Hospitality, as first thing, is we rebranded the word ESG. We called it UBU, U-B-B-U. So United, building a better universe. i tell you why, because when you say ESG to somebody, um, people go like, mm, it almost sounds like you get punished already before you get punished. I always say it's a bit like going to the dentist. Um, where when you say Ubu and you make it something that is cute, something that just allows people to smile, just something that, you know, gets people to just be positive or, or whatever else. All of a sudden you create an environment where, you know, people are motivated to do something about it. What we then did is we, we developed a, a division um, for Ubu and it really goes ground up. So it's working with the teams, implementing the promises that we are making. And when you go into a place like Saudi Arabia, but also the UAE, but also Egypt, um, ESG was never on the forefront of, of um, developments or operations because it wasn't necessarily part of, of things that were taught that much. But now, them having the knowledge, them being so innovative and probably being so ahead of the game, they really have the potential to change. Um, and there's a lot of focus on, on sustainability when it comes to green, when it comes to building, when it comes to licenses and certification. But there's also the level of social sustainability. Um, there is the people, there is the integration. And really what we're trying to do with every project is instead of saying we have to be LEED certified, which is not possible in every single place. And it's also not affordable in every single place. Um, and to do it, sometimes you have to, you know, you create a worse carbon footprint than if you were just going local. So our approach with the type of projects we have is to localize it as much as we can, to create transparency of supply chain, to include locality wherever we are. Um, and with that, you really start building out sustainability, you know, and ESG responsibility from the core out um, and building the measurements all around that. Because if you can't measure it, you know, it's just a lot of talk without something that you actually have to show for it.